But I'm telling you, Donald Trump is our guest, ladies and gentlemen, for the next 30 minutes or so. And obviously, he is a maverick. He's an original. He tells it like it is. Doesn't read off a teleprompter. Neither do I. He's self-made. This whole media operation that reaches 20 million people a week worldwide, conservatively self-made. That's why I'm so excited. And he joins us from Trump Tower in New York City. He is the leading 2016 Republican presidential contender. Donald Trump um, again joins us. And I've got so many questions. But, but first off, uh, Donald, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Alex. Great. Great to be with you. I've got so many questions, but you are vindicated. This has got to be the 50th time the last six months on the radical Muslim celebrating, not just in New Jersey, but New York, Palestine, all over. What do you have to say? They're still attacking you, though. We've got Dan Rather on video. We've got New York Post. We've got Washington Post. We've got, uh, I mean, what's going on here? Well, I took a lot of heat and I was very strong on it and I held uh, my line and then all of a sudden, you know, hundreds of people were calling up my office. I was the other day in Sarasota, Florida, and people are in line and we had 12,000 people, which is fantastic. And the people were saying, many of the people from New Jersey, four or five people said, Mr. Trump, I saw it myself. I was there. They talked about Patterson, but they said, I saw it myself, Mr. Trump. I was there. So many people have called in and, and on Twitter, at real Donald Trump, they're all tweeting. So I knew it happened and I held my line and people wanted me to apologize and uh, we can't do that. People like you and I can't do that so easily. Now, we can do it if we're wrong, Alex. You apologize. I'd apologize if I was wrong. But they were celebrating and they were celebrating the fall of the World Trade Center. I think that's disgraceful. It is. And that same week you were uh, reporting on that fact, we had two different international football games, soccer games, with the Turkish fans and others during the moment of silence uh, for the dead people in, in Paris chanting Allah Akbar and booing. So did that not happen too? Well, that happened and everybody saw it. That was a week ago and the players were out on the field and they couldn't believe it. They were embarrassed. They didn't know what to do. The coach and the managers, they all apologized, but it happened. Look, we, we have to deal with reality. And, you know, it all started because I said we need surveillance. We need proper surveillance. We have people that truly are evil. And they're coming from someplace, and you know sort of where they're coming from, at least the vicinity. And I said, we need proper surveillance, whether it's a mosque or any place else. We have to be surveilled, and we have to see what's coming at us, because we're not going to have a country anymore. Between the weak borders that we have, the pathetic and weak borders where politicians are afraid to do anything about it, uh, between all of what's happening with radical, you know, you, you look at what's going on, you have a president that doesn't even want to talk about you know, the radical uh, Muslim stuff. He doesn't want to mention the word. He doesn't want to say it. But you look at what's happening where we have a president that's over there celebrating global warming and trying to get everybody excited about global warming. Like that's our number one problem. He considers that to be our number one problem. And our number one problem is what's going on where they want to blow up our cities and they want to blow up our country. That's our number one problem. And then our number two problem is crippled America, your number one New York Times bestseller. We're going to talk about that in a few minutes, but let's continue with the number one problem. And I agree with you. Uh, it's now in mainstream news, Associated Press and others are reporting that it's a secret deal with Turkey, with the Germans, with Merkel, the, the admitted socialist, to bring in millions of radical Islamists. They admit almost all of them are Sunni that basically invaded Syria they're getting their butt kicked by the Russians, so now they want to flee up to the north into Turkey. You said months ago, bomb the oil of ISIS, and the, and the mainstream media laughed because you said the sky was blue again. Now the Pentagon says that's the right thing to do. And now you've come out saying, quote, uh, it looks like uh, that Turkey's on the side of ISIS, close quote. Well, that uh, the next day the Russians released satellite photos documenting that there are literally thousands of trucks coming up to the border at these huge terminals connected to Irgun, the president's son, making billions of dollars total off of this. Again, you're in trouble for saying the sky is blue. Well, I was right about that. I was right in saying in a book that I wrote, you covered it really nicely. I appreciate it. But I wrote a very political book years ago in the year 2000, The America We Deserve. And I said in that book that we better be careful with this guy named Osama bin Laden. I mean, I really study this stuff. I really find it very interesting. And even though I'm a businessman, I find it, I've always found, I always have been involved in politics. I said, we better be careful with Osama bin Laden. There's a guy named Osama bin Laden. Nobody really knew who he was, but he was nasty. He was saying really nasty things about our country and what he wants to do to it. 
And I wrote in the book, 2000, two years before the World Trade Center came down, I talked about Osama bin Laden, you better take him out. I said, he's going to crawl under a rock. You better take him out. And now people are seeing that. They're saying, you know, Trump predicted Osama bin Laden, which actually is true. And then two years later, a year and a half later, he knocked down the World Trade Center. And I talked about terrorism and that. That was before terrorism as we know it today. I said, we better be careful. That's going to happen. It's going to be a big thing. And it certainly is a big thing. So with the oil, and I'm glad you brought it up, but as you know, for three years, I've been saying you better take out the oil because if you don't take the oil, it's going to be a problem. So we shouldn't have been in Iraq. But once we got there, the way Osama, the way we came out was was horrible. And I said, take the oil. Then we didn't take the oil. So ISIS got the oil. And as you know, Iran is getting the oil because Iran is going to take over all of Iraq. You know, we, we made one of the worst deals in the history of our world when we gave them one hundred and fifty billion dollars. And virtually we gave them keys to nuclear weapons. One of the Mr. Most Trump, I hate to interrupt you. You are the leading presidential front runner with the Republicans gaining a huge lead as you don't back down. But I've got to just back you up again, because the more I research what you've actually said and done, it's amazing. You were the only leading American figure who openly said, do not go to war in Iraq. They had almost, what, 90 percent votes in Congress for it, bipartisan. You said, don't do it. Iran will take over. Uh, you said, I mean, look, you can say that today and everybody can say that. But you said that in 2001, 2002, 2003, when it was very unpopular because you've done your research and had good advisors. How did you know that when almost no one else did? Well, first of all, I'm the most militaristic person there is. I'm going to build the military. If I win, I'm going to make our military so strong, so powerful that nobody's going to mess with us. We're going to take care of our vets and all of that. But I have to tell you, you have to know if you're going to go to war, you have to do it properly and you have to know what to do. I viewed it as this. Iran and Iraq were the same in terms of strength. And they'd have they're constantly fighting. That's all they do is they fight. Right. They go to war all the time and they'd move 10 feet left, 10 feet right, 10 feet left. Then they'd rest. And then they've started again four years later. This has been gone on for you know, forever. Years. Forever. And this is the way it is. I said, if you take out Iran or if you take out Iraq, either one, you're going to destabilize the Middle East. Well, we took out Iraq. And by the way, Iraq has the second largest oil reserves in the world. People don't even know that. So we gave, like, incredible. We took out Iraq. I said, you're going to destabilize. Well, and I said, and you'll know this, and you know this, and I appreciate what you just said. Uh, then Iran is going to come in and Iran is going to take over Iraq. And they, they're they just taking it over right now. As we speak, they're taking it over. Iran is running Iraq and very soon will be virtually going to be totally running Iraq, especially after all of the, you know, the deal we just made, which is the worst. So I said, keep the oil. And I said, if you're going to leave, you shouldn't have gone in, but they shouldn't have. They should have left soldiers behind, like 20,000 or a certain number of soldiers. But if you're going to leave, take the oil. And I've said it. Then they left. They didn't take the oil. So ISIS got the oil. Iran is getting the oil. Everybody's getting everything but us. So we lost thousands of soldiers. We spent two trillion dollars in Iraq. We have wounded warriors who I love all over the place. And what do we get out of it, Alex? We had nothing. We had nothing. So, no, the French and the Germans are getting the oil and the Iranians are getting the oil. And you know who the number one customer for the oil is? Guess what? China. That's I mean, right. How smart is China? They outsmart us on every level militarily. They outsmart us on trade like we're losing. We have a four hundred and fifty billion dollar trade deficit with China. Let me ask you this. You're a top business guy, you know, on your own from nothing. How did China get ninety seven percent of rare earth in, uh, uh, minerals in the world? How is the United States or nobody else even trying to get rare earth minerals when it's what goes in the smartphones, the computers? Trillions is made a year. How did we just give them the global market in that? That's crazy. Well, what a lot of people don't know, Afghanistan. Now, Afghanistan's a place we can go in because, you know, you have Pakistan and you have nuclear weapons, a lot of things going on there. But we, we go into Afghanistan. We're fighting, you know, tremendous mountains and ridges. We're fighting on one side. And you know who's got their excavators on the other China. side? China. taking out all the minerals. You know, Afghanistan, nobody knew this. Afghanistan is rich with minerals, not oil, but minerals. Lithium, Afghanistan. everything. And China is taking out all the minerals. And here we are fighting. We have trillions, we have like a trillion dollars in Afghanistan, and we get nothing out of it. And we're going to end up leaving and keeping a couple of thousand soldiers there and this and that. We get nothing. China is taking out the minerals. They're the, they're the buyers, the big buyers at very, very low prices of, as you know, of the oil in Iraq and probably in Syria. But China is a big buyer of the oil. But one thing with the oil, it's sort of because you've covered it. For three years, I've been saying hit the oil because ISIS is getting strong and they're no JV, as the president said, and they're certainly not contained. But I said hit the oil and hit them hard. 
And they laughed at me. And they would put generals on television saying, no, that strategy wouldn't work. Well, after Paris, they started hitting the oil. And it does work. The problem is we've given them a two-year edge. They have billions of dollars. The Russians started hitting the oil for one month, and ISIS is already rolling over. So Putin no, is following your, your strategy. You know well, Vladimir we Putin done, well. We should have done it two years ago, Alex. That's the only problem. I Donald mean, Trump joins us live. Can you speak to, as president, what your relationship would be with foreign leaders and, and, and what you know about uh, Vladimir Putin? Because all I know is, why are we starting a fight with Russia when they're not doing anything to us? Right. Well, uh, number one, and, and just to finish on the oil, by the way, I say hit the oil, but we should keep the oil. In other words, we should keep. We'll get ExxonMobil. They'll go in. We'll get other of our oil companies. We'll get some of the great oil companies. We bid it out. We should keep the oil. You know, in the old days, to the victor belong the spoils, right? We don't have that. We go in, we fight a war, and we leave. We get nothing, except we get debt, and we get deficit. That's all we get. Uh, I think I get along great with people. I mean, I will probably get along well with him, and if I don't, somebody else will, and who knows? You know, he's a difficult cookie. He's tough and he's smart. I was on the show 60 Minutes with him recently, not together. I mean, we they did him and they profiled me at the same show, which was there. We were stable mates, right? But I think I'd get along very well with him. I think it do fine. Look, here's the thing. We lose with every country, and yet we don't get along with any countries. China is killing us. Everybody's killing us. China's just beating us to a pulp and trade. Japan, Mexico is killing us, and yet we don't get along with anybody. With me, they're not going to get so rich. Believe me, they're not going to get so rich at all. We're going to take back our jobs. We're going to take back our manufacturing. We take back our base. But they'll like us more than they do now. Sort of amazing. Well, Donald Trump, let me say this. My audience, I'd say 90% supports you. Okay. Right. And right. you definitely uh, have, have shown your knowledge of geopolitical systems. Hillary and others have been demonizing you for saying radical Muslims celebrated on 9-11. But she got caught a few years ago claiming that she got shot at in Bosnia, in the air, on the ground. They have video of it all. None of it happened. She admits she lied. If you did that, you'd be done. But you wouldn't do something like that. You don't steal glory from our veterans. But they no. demonize you for made-up scandals every day, trying to see what'll stick. And then you got Hillary involved in Benghazi. You've got them involved in everything. And people love you for tough talk. Is it not time for impeachment hearings against Obama? I mean, what do we do politically to really try to prosecute Hillary Clinton? Well, you remember this, the, the best thing that we have going with Obama is he's got a year left, okay? Because, you know, by the time you do the hearings and everything, I, I don't... So don't you know, make him a martyr. In a way, you'll make him a martyr. But I, I don't even say that. You know, one of the things that I'm, I'm the most disappointed in Republicans, because they go to Washington, they're going to do all this stuff, they're going to impeach Obama, they're going to uh, end uh, Obamacare, which has to be ended. It's a disaster. I don't know if you've seen the premiums, they're going up... It's killing everything. ...by 55 percent. It's, it's, it, you know, it's going to implode anyway. In 17, 2017, Obamacare blows up. It's over. I mean, it's over, and everybody knows it, and they're, they're doing big stories. Even the ones that were for it are saying, uh-oh, this isn't working. Well, the premiums are a disaster, and if you look at anything having to do with Obamacare right now, it's over. But the problem with the Republicans is they'll try and fix it. They'll try, instead of get rid of it, and we can come up with a phenomenal plan that's much better for the people. The people are getting killed with that. So... There's so many things to do, Alex. We will do such a good job. There's so many fronts. A, a number. We'll, we'll win on trade. We're going to strengthen our military. We're going to take care of our vets. We're going to get rid of Obamacare. We're going to do so many things. There's so many things that can be done, but we have to use our good people. You know, everybody running against me in terms of even the Republican side and Hillary, certainly, they're all controlled by their donors and their special interests and the lobbyists, right? I'm putting up my own money. I'm funding my own campaign. Nobody's going to control me. I'm going to do what's right for you and for the American people. Listen, I get it. I mean, you are a true maverick. I understand. You, you know, you've made tens of millions of dollars. You've hired tens of thousands of people. I, I mean, I would imagine that as you've gotten older, correct me if I'm wrong, because I know you talked about wanting to serve America decades ago. Really, all it comes down to is wanting to have a free country for your children and grandchildren. And that's where I want to come to this point next. Because I know you're smart, sir, and, and I know that you also, though, you don't dumb your message down, but you keep it at a mid-level so the general public and the establishment as well can get it. But let's get down to brass tacks. Mm -hmm. I routinely talk to the top generals, special forces, mm -hmm. uh, Pentagon currently, uh, out of the Pentagon, CIA, as I know you do, and we'll just leave it at that. Um, there are a lot of people in this government and also retired who don't want to destroy the country. 
They really know that we've reached the crossroads where the country's done as a third world nation within a few more years. Forget Donald right. Trump in four years. If this happens, we're done. I mean, we're talking about resurrecting the dead here. We could turn it around right now. As you've said properly, you're, you're, 